Hey, I'm Nate Savage, and welcome to this lesson on three essential finger picking patterns. Now, if you've been wanting to get into fingerstyle guitar, or if you've been you know, messing around with fingerstyle for a while, but you're wondering how to get beyond the basics and start building the coordinations you need to where you can play more fingerstyle songs or make up your own finger picking patterns, then this lesson is gonna be really great for you to focus on for a while. Finger style guitar is essentially just developing a collection of coordinations as far as your picking hand goes. And once you develop that control and the coordinations that come with getting some of these fundamental patterns down, it's going to be a lot easier for you to learn the finger style songs you want and then come up with your own unique picking patterns too. The three patterns we're going to go over in this lesson aren't the simplest ones, but they will help you develop the control and coordination you need to progress as a finger style guitarist. And I'll break up each one of these three patterns in a way that's easy to access no matter what skill level you're at. Pattern number one is a simple rolling pattern. And this is extremely useful for a couple of reasons. Reason number one is gonna help you develop the control over your fingers, your individual fingers that you need to progress in finger style guitar. Number two, it's a great go-to pattern if you're playing along with other musicians. For example, if you have another guitar player who's doing a lot of strummy stuff, or if you have a piano player who's just holding down the main chords, it's a great finger picking pattern to throw in to kind of fill things out. If you've never done any rolling before, I'd suggest kind of breaking our main rolling exercise, this one. I'd suggest breaking that up into just rolling up and then rolling down before trying to put it together. Let me show you what I mean. Just rolling up is gonna be this thumb, index, middle, ring finger. And I'm playing a C chord, so I'm just playing the middle four strings of the guitar and leaving the low E string out and the high E string. So thumb, index, middle, ring. Over and over again. And I use classical guitar technique, so my hand is floating. My point of reference is pretty much wherever my thumb is landing or resting on, right? But if you're playing folk style with your wrist on the guitar or your pinky on the top of the guitar, that's totally fine. But that's the coordination you need to build. And the cool thing about this one is you only you move one digit at a time and you can really focus on being accurate and developing your timing and have it really even. So this is working on a lot of fundamental finger style and finger picking movements as far as your picking hand goes. When you first start out working on your rolling, don't put a metronome on. Just try to stay relaxed and get the basic coordination down. Try to make it as even as possible in volume from string to string. Try to be very accurate. Hit the exact strings you mean to hit. And I have nails on my hand. You could have no nails, it's really up to you what sound you want, it doesn't matter. But that's the idea, and once you get that basic coordination down, you can start working with a metronome and a tempo where you're not making any mistakes. Make this part of your daily warm-up when you sit down for your practice time. Just go through that exercise over and over. It's a great way to get your hands to come back and to the guitar. And then once you're comfortable with that, you're going to need to work on the other half of this exercise, which is rolling down. It's the same thing, only you start with your ring finger, middle finger, index, and thumb. And you want to keep the same things in mind. Try to be as even as possible. Don't worry about our metronome at first. Just worry about getting that basic coordination down. Stay relaxed. And when you're ready, put a metronome on. So you can make that part of your daily warm up too when you sit down to practice, but once you get rolling up and rolling down equally comfortable, you need to start to put them together like this. So we're rolling up and then coming right back down. And this is the main first finger picking pattern that we're going over, just rolling. And go through the same process, go really slowly at first. Be very deliberate. that coordination you know after a couple days or a couple of weeks put a metronome on and you can do this with any chord I would probably just change the bass note that I'm hitting with my thumb if I were to play for example a G chord but 
work on switching it around to other chords. And you know, you may have to change some notes you're playing with your fingers or thumb to fit whatever chord you're using. Once you're comfortable with this basic rolling pattern, I would encourage you to throw it into some chord progressions and then start developing it that way. Here's a standard C, F, G chord progression, and I'll be doing this with each of the three finger picking patterns we're gonna go over in this lesson. Let me encourage you just to experiment with this first finger picking pattern, rolling. Get some chord progressions and see what kind of variations you can come up with. Finger picking pattern number two gets a little bit more complicated as far as finger independence goes. It's called a four step finger picking pattern. And it's called that because there are four distinct motions that you need to perform to make this pattern. And once you learn those motions and have them down, you can kind of manipulate them to fit whatever chord or chord progression you might wanna play. Let's take a look at the pattern, and just to be consistent, I'm going to be using a C major chord just to keep things all on the same page. And the pattern is thumb, index, thumb, middle. That's it. So you have four distinct motions, thumb, index, thumb, middle. And just stick your hand out in the air and do that over and over again. And that's like the first step to getting this basic coordination down. So thumb, index, thumb, middle. Thumb, index, thumb, middle. I have two versions of this finger picking pattern for you just to kind of help break you into the idea of using this pattern with a chord. The first simple version of this one just stays on the same string with your thumb. So your thumb is going to be grabbing the A string the entire time. And then your index finger is going to be on the B and your middle finger is going to be on the high E string. And you're just going to implement that finger picking pattern with the C chord. So thumb, index, and come back to the A string, thumb again, and then middle finger on the high E. That's the entire basic pattern. Take this as slowly as you need to at first. Don't even worry about a metronome. Just concentrate on accuracy and getting it exactly right over and over again. And you can do this with any chord that you like. Let's use a G major chord for an example again. I'll just put that G chord on and maybe hit the low G note there on the sixth string with my thumb. And then the same top two notes with my other two fingers. And do that as slowly as you need to to build that coordination and stay accurate. The full version of this four step finger picking pattern Throws a little bit of a twist in here. Let's put our C chord back on. We're going to set up the same way we did for that simple version. Thumb on the fifth string and then first finger on the B, second finger on the high E. The only difference here is we're going to alternate our thumb between the fifth and fourth string. So thumb, index, thumb on the D now, middle. And that's the entire pattern. You're just making it a little more interesting by alternating strings with your thumb. This is a really staple folk finger style picking pattern that you're gonna hear a lot or variations of this. And once you have this one down, you'll be able to play a lot of songs. You're just gonna use this to improvise along with other people as they play. Start out really slowly. Don't worry about a metronome. Just be really accurate. And then once you're getting the feel for that down, you can speed it up a little bit and maybe even throw a metronome on. And you can still do this with other chords too. Again, this G major, for example. That's a great exercise to do. Once you get the basic finger picking pattern down, you're gonna to wanna to experiment with different chord progressions and kind of using and manipulating this finger picking pattern to go along with those chords. Let me show you what I mean. I'll play that same C major, F major, G major progression.
Travis picking is when you have a constant bass line with your thumb and then you have some melody notes or accompaniment on top. And finger picking pattern number two that we just went over kind of edged as close to that. But finger picking pattern number three is what I consider to be one of the standard Travis picking patterns. And a lot of people can get intimidated by this kind of playing, but there are some very methodical steps that you can take to get your skills up to the level where you can do some Travis picking. And that's what we're gonna go over with finger picking pattern number three. I have four steps to get you to the standard Travis picking pattern that we're talking about. And step number one is to just be able to keep a constant bass note going with your thumb. So we're gonna put our C chord back on and play straight quarter notes with your thumb. That's step number one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You need to have this down to where you don't even have to think about it at all because you're gonna be doing other things with your fingers and you need this to be kind of on automatic pilot especially when you start alternating bass notes like this. But step number one is just to get that thumb going to where you don't even have to think about it and where you're very accurate with which string you're hitting with that thumb. Step number two, as I just kind of alluded to, is to get to where you can alternate between bass notes with your thumb. Just quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you may have to slow this way down and work on your accuracy for a few days a few weeks or even a few months, but this is a really key part of finger style guitars, particularly Travis picking, and something that you need to get down to where you don't even have to think about it again. So alternating, I'm just playing the fifth and fourth strings back and forth on a C chord with my thumb. Take it slow and take some time to build that coordination in your daily practice. Step number three is to put a melody note on top of this alternating bass line that we have going. And we're gonna keep it really simple for this step. We're gonna put one note on beat two of every measure. And that note is the B string. And I'm gonna use my middle finger. It's a C note because I'm making a C major chord, right? So one, two, three, four. That's the entire pattern for this. One, two, three, So you may have to slow this down way slow, just painfully slow to build that coordination. Just go as slow as it takes and just do it over and over again. Just take you know 10 or 15 minutes a day and work on just building this coordination and being accurate with it. And then once you get that down, you can put it with a metronome and start to build speed a little bit. The final step to complete this standard Travis picking pattern is to add a couple of more melody notes on top while keeping that alternating bass pattern going. Let me show you what I mean. This is a two measure finger picking pattern, but we're gonna take it just one measure at a time. And both measures just have a constant bass line with your thumb. So that's one measure, second measure. We just have to learn where to put the other notes with our fingers. It starts off the same way as the last step. So on beat two, you're gonna have the B string with your middle finger and then continue your bass line. And then on the and of beat three, you're gonna have the G string with your index finger and then on beat four, finish your bass line. So let me play that for you very slowly. Do that again. And you just wanna do that on its own, get that coordination down, and then start trying to loop it. And don't even worry about going along with this with a metronome at first. Slow this down as much as you need to, and count out loud if you have to, and intentionally put those notes exactly where they need to be. Once you get the basic coordination down, then you can put a metronome on and work on building it up to speed. The second measure starts off with the one on your thumb and then the B string with your middle finger at the same time. Then B2, the and of B2, you're gonna grab the G string with your index finger. B3 is your bass note. And then you have a bass note and the B string with your middle finger on beat four. 
So that is very different from the first measure, but it's the same type of coordination they need to work on. So again, work on that as slowly as you need to. This may take a couple of days or a couple of weeks, but work on that very slowly. And then once you have the basic coordination down, put the metronome on and speed it up. So work on each measure individually and then put them together for the entire pattern. Here you go. And again, that may take you a while to build that coordination, but you're programming in how to keep that constant bass going, even when you're playing syncopated rhythms with your fingers. So again, get it down slow, put a metronome on and work it up to speed. And again, the important thing here is to experiment with this and use it on a regular basis. So come up with some chord progressions and kind of manipulate this finger picking pattern to put your own unique take on it. Here's that same C, F, G progression for using this pattern. And just as an example, you can do this with any type of chords that you want. Finger picking pattern number two is really folksy, so you might want to do that with open major chords. Now, this finger picking pattern number three, the Travis picking pattern, is kind of bluesy. It lends itself to that more, so you might want to try that with seventh chord, something like this. If you want to pursue fingerstyle guitar, these three patterns will help you gain the control and coordination that you need to go out there and learn songs faster and even come up with your own interesting patterns. Add these to your daily practice time. Start out very slow with no metronome. Once you get the basic coordination down, use the metronome to work them up to speed and then go out and start applying them to songs in your own music. If you found this lesson helpful, you should check out the free guitar toolbox. It's my collection of over 50 step-by-step -step lessons that address a lot of really common problem areas for a lot of guitar players. And it helps you address those areas through fun jam tracks and practical musical applications. You can check it out at guitarlessons.com toolbox, and it's free.